In this video, I will show you how to make form validation using ASP.NET web application. So here we have this simple contact form and if we click on submit, we can see that here we have a validation error and also we have error messages for the required fields. Now let's provide some fields of this form. So let's provide the first name, the last name and the email address. Let's click on submit. So this time we don't have any error with the first name, with the last name, with the email address, but the message is required. So for this reason, we still have this error message. Now let's provide the message. Let's click on submit. And this time we have this success message. Your message has been received correctly. Also the form has been initialized. Now let's create a new razor page in the pages folder. Let's select razor page empty then add. And here let's select razor page empty and let's call it contact.cshtml. Then in this file which is contact.cshtml let's create our contact form. So first let's create a row. And inside this row let's create a column. And to display this column in the center of the row we can use the class mx02. Then let's add a rounded border. So here let's add rounded, then border. And also we need to add some paddings. And inside this column we can display the title of this page. So here we will display the text contact form and we will display it in the center of the column. Now let's create our form. So this form will be submitted to the same page, so we don't need to define the action, but it will be submitted using the post method, so here we have to define the method. Then let's create the first field of this form. So in this row we have a label with the text first name. Also we have this input field which is called first name. So the name here is the name of the parameter that will be submitted to the server and the value will be the value of this input field. Now let's copy this div and let's create another field inside this form. So the second field will be for the last name. So here in the label let's write last name. And let's rename this input field. So let's call it last name. Now let's create another row for the email address. So in the label let's write email. And let's call this input field email. Let's create another row for the phone number. In the label let's write phone. And let's call this input field phone. Now let's create another row for the subject. So in the label let's write subject. And we don't need an input field and instead we will use a select element. So let's delete this input field and let's create a select element. So here we have this select element. It is called subject. So subject here is the name of the parameter that will be submitted to the server. And here we have four options. So the values that we have here are the values that will be visible to the user. And the values that we have here are the values that can be submitted to the server. Now let's create another row for the message. So here we have the label with the text message and we have a text area which is called message. So message here is the name of the parameter that will be submitted to the server. Now let's create a last row for the submit button. 
So in this row, we have this button which is of type submit and the text that will be visible to the user is submit. So when we submit the form, it will be submitted using the post method. Now let's go to the model. So we can make a right click, then view code. And inside this model, we have the onGet method. But the form will be submitted using the post method. So we need to implement the onPost method. Then we need to create public properties that will receive the data of the form. We can create them just here. So they should be public. The first property will be for the first name. So it is of type string. Let's call it first name. And let's initialize it with an empty value. Then let's create the last name. Then the email address, so let's call it email. Then we need another property for the phone number, so we can call it just phone. Then we need another property for the subject. And the last property will be for the message. Then we need to bind these properties to the form. So to bind these properties to the form, we have to decorate them with the attribute bind property, or also we can decorate the class itself with the attribute bind properties. So if all the properties of this class will be bound to the form, then we can decorate the class with bind properties. But if only some of these properties are bound to the form, in this case, we have only to decorate the corresponding properties. So in this example, I will decorate all of these properties with bind property attribute. So here we have to add brackets, then bind property. And we have to use this attribute to decorate all the properties. Now we need to add all of these properties to the form. So let's go to the contact page. And we need to add the first name to this input field. So we can delete this attribute. And let's use ASP4 tag helper. And we will bind the first name property of the model to this input field. So here we have to write first name. And if we have any error related to the first name, then we can display it just after this input field. So we need to create a span. And in the span, we have to use the tag helper called ASP validation for. Then here we have to provide the name of the property, which is first name. And also we can use a bootstrap class to display the error message using the red color. So here the bootstrap class is called text danger. Now let's bind the last name to the second input field, which is this one. So let's delete this attribute. Let's write ASP4 and the name of the property, which is last name. Then we need to create a span, so we can copy this one. Let's add it here. And let's change the name of the property. Then here let's bind the email property to this input field. And let's add a span. So it is for the email property. Now let's do the same thing with the phone number. Let's add a span. Now let's bind the subject property to this select element.
and also we can add a span now let's bind the message property to this text area let's add asp4 and the name of the property which is message also we need to add a span for any validation error so here let's write message now let's test the application and we obtain this contact form so here we have the first name the last name the email address the phone number the subject and the message and if we click on this select element we have four options now let's click on this submit button and here we can see that we have validation errors for the required fields so the first name is required the last name is required the same thing for the email address the phone number and for the message now let's try to provide the first name and the last name let's click on submit so this time we don't have the error for the first name and for the last name but the other fields are required so let's try to fill all the form let's click on submit and this time we don't have any error now I will show you how to customize the error messages and how to make some fields optional for example let's suppose that we want that the phone number is optional so I will show you how to do this and finally I will show you how to clear the form if the data validation is successful so to customize the error message we need to add the required attribute so just here we can add another attribute called the required and here we can see that we have this error this is because we need to add the data annotations namespace then to customize the error message we have to add parentheses then we need to define the error message property so it is called error message and we have to provide it with a custom value so for example let's say that the first name is required now let's copy this statement and let's add it to the last name so here let's write the last name is required let's do the same thing with the email address so here the email address is required but the phone number is optional so to make the phone number optional we have here to add question mark so with this question mark the phone number can be null so it becomes optional and also the message is required So to check if the form validation was successful or not we can use model state so let's go to the on post method and here let's add a condition so if then exclamation mark then model state dot is valid so if the model state is not valid this means that we have a validation error in the form in this case we can display an error message to the user and we can exit the on post method so to display the error message to the user we can create two public variables let's call the first variable success message and let's initialize it with an empty value then let's create another variable called error message so it is public string and of course let's initialize it with an empty value so if the model state is not valid then we can display an error message so here let's write error message and for the error message we can display for example data validation failed and of course we need to exit the on post method else the data validation was successful in this case we can display a success message so here the success message will be your message has been received correctly 
And after displaying the success message, we need to clear the form. So let's initialize all the properties that are bound to the form. So here we will initialize all the properties with an empty value. And to apply the new values of these properties, we have to add another statement. So here the other statement is model state dot clear. Now let's display the error message or the success message in the page. So let's go to the page. And just after the title of this page, we can display the error message or the success message. So if the error message is not empty, then we will display an alert. So it is a bootstrap alert of type warning. And here we will display the error message. But if we have a success message, then we will display another alert of type success. And here we will display the success message. Now let's test the application. Let's click on submit. So here we can see that we have this error message, which is data validation failed. And also here we have our custom error message. Also, we don't have any error message for the phone number because it is optional. Now let's fill the form. Let's click on submit. And here we have this success message. Your message has been received correctly. Also, the form has been initialized.